In this video, we will be writing a polynomial function that includes the given zeros, and in this video we'll be focusing on what happens when we're given imaginary zeros to include. So before we begin, we need to discuss something called the complex conjugates theorem. And this particular theorem is very similar to the irrational conjugates theorem, where we had to add in the opposite irrational root. So what this particular theorem states is that if f is a polynomial function with real coefficients for all of its terms, and you have a zero that you know is imaginary, such as a plus b times i, if you have a zero that is imaginary, it will have a paired imaginary zero of a minus b times i. So that is also a zero. So what we need to look for is if we find we have an imaginary zero, we need to make sure that we also account for its conjugate. So we have to have both of these if we have an imaginary zero involved in our particular problem. So let's jump in here and try an example. So this particular problem states that we need to write a polynomial function with rational coefficients that contains the zeros of 3 and 4i. Now, while 4i isn't written in the form a plus bi, obviously, what this really is is 0 plus 4i. We're just not writing the 0 part of it. So because this is an imaginary 0, we need to use that complex conjugates theorem, and we need to note that our other 0 is going to be 0 minus 4i. So we need to account for 3, 4i, and negative 4i, as we write our polynomial function. So, just as we've done before, we're going to go and we're going to write it as, we're going to start with the 3, which we know becomes x minus 3 because it's the opposite. Then as we replace with these complex roots, we're simply going to write 4, and we have the opposite of, so minus 4 times i. We then have x this is going to be minus a negative 4i, which we should know at this point becomes a plus i, so we can just turn that into a plus. And now we've written this out into what looks like a factored form. And what we need to do from here is we need to rewrite this into standard form so that we have our original polynomial that we would have started with that contains these zeros. Now, I always like to start with pairing the imaginary ones together because I know that they are conjugates, and that hints that something special might happen as I multiply them all together. So I'm going to start by multiplying. So I have x times x, which is x squared, x times 4i, which becomes plus, I'm going to write this as 4xi. I then take negative 4i times x, which becomes a negative 4xi. Then I take negative 4i times positive 4i, so that's a negative. 4 times 4 is 16, and i times i is i squared. And what I first notice here is that these two terms cancel out completely. And then I notice I'm left with what looks like x squared minus 16 times i squared. And while I might be tempted to leave it this way, I know that i squared is really equal to negative 1. So what this whole statement here is, is i squared minus 16 times negative 1, which ultimately becomes x squared plus 16. So we want to make sure we rewrite our i squareds because in doing so, we were actually able to multiply out those two conjugates and we end up with a polynomial that no longer contains an i, which is pretty convenient. So what we're going to do from here is we're now going to rewrite our original equation and what's left of it. So we have x minus 3 still in the problem, and then we have x squared plus 16. So now the last thing that we need to do is we need to multiply out these two binomials. We have x times x squared, which is x to the third, x times 16, which is 16x, negative 3 times x squared, which is negative 3x squared, and negative 3 times 16, which is a negative 48. So I'm just going to take a moment here and rewrite this into standard form so all of my exponents are decreasing. I don't see any like terms, so it can't be combined together further, but we get x cubed 
minus 3x squared plus 16x minus 48. So let's try one more example here. So we can see that we have three zeros currently accounted for. We have 4, negative 3, 2 plus 3i, and then we have to account for the conjugate of that last imaginary root, which is going to be 2 minus 3 times i. So that's where we're going to start. Now if we just start with our equation here, putting in the real roots is pretty easy. We have x minus 4, and then we have x plus 3. Then with the imaginary roots, this is a little tricky. We have to do x minus, and then in parentheses, 2 plus 3i. And then we have x minus, and in parentheses this time, 2 minus 3i. Now, I don't always like looking at all of those parentheses. I like to rewrite this a little bit. So I'm going to distribute that negative out. And these parentheses become x minus 2 minus 3i and become x minus 2 plus 3 times i. So what I'm going to start off doing here is I'm actually going to multiply these out to start because I know with the conjugates I have a chance that some things are going to cancel out and make this problem a little bit easier to solve. So I do x times x, which is x squared x times negative 2, which is negative 2x, x times 3i, which is 3xi. Then I have negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 2, which is a plus 4, and negative 2 times 3i, which is minus 6i. And then the last one there, I have negative 3i times x, so negative 3xi negative 3i times a negative 2, which is going to be a positive 6i, and then negative 3i times a positive 3i, which is a negative 9i squared. So if I look through this, what I notice is that the 3xi and the negative 3xi cancel. I then also have a negative 6i and a positive 6i that cancel. I also can see that this becomes a negative 9i i squared is negative 1, so this whole thing right here can be rewritten as plus 9. And then if I start combining some like terms here, I can see that I end up with essentially x squared minus 4x, because I have a minus 2x and a minus 2x, and then I have 4 plus 9, which is plus 13. So I'm finally able to go back and rewrite my original equation here to be f of x is equal to x minus 4 times x plus 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 13. Now from here you can multiply these out in any way you'd like. You can multiply out the two small ones first. Or you can multiply the large one times each small one. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to start off this time just multiplying out the two small ones. So I have x times x, which is x squared. x times 3, which is 3x. Negative 4 times x, which is minus 4x. And negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. So if I rewrite this function one more time... This ends up to be x squared minus 1x minus 12 times x squared minus 4x plus 13. So from here I have one more multiplication to do and I have to take the first trinomial, everything in that first set of parentheses, times everything in the second. So I have x squared times x squared, which is going to be x to the fourth x squared times a negative 4x, which is minus 4x cubed, and then also times the 13, so plus 13x squared. Then the negative 1x times the x squared becomes negative 1x cubed, then also times the negative 4x, which becomes plus 4x squared, and then times the 13, which is negative 13x. And then the negative 12, we have negative 12x squared 
plus 48x, and then that becomes a negative 156. So our final step here is just to combine any like terms that we see. So I only see 1x to the fourth, so I'm going to leave that in there. Then I see I have negative 4x cubed and negative 1x cubed, so that's negative 5x cubed. So I've accounted for that. I then look for as many x squareds as I can find. The 13 plus 4 gives me 17x squared, and then minus 12 gives me a plus 5x squared. I then combine the x's to get a positive 35x, and then I'm left with just the constant on the end as a negative 156. So there we have it, our polynomial that contains all four of these particular zeros.